Hey, what's up everyone? Game Dad here, coming at you guys with a brand new compilation video. And this time, we are taking a look at one of the most amazing consoles ever. You ready for this? The Philips CDI. That's right, I did a two-part series covering everything in my Philips CDI collection, but I have no idea how big this collection actually is. I just know that I got a huge stack of games whenever I originally bought this system. But first, if you are new to the channel or you just haven't yet, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below, as well as that little notification bell so that you get an alert every time I got a new video coming out. Now let's go ahead and dive in and see what amazing wonders the Philips CDI has for us. 1995, All the News and Views was released by Lost Boys in 1993, and this is one of those, like, kind of history in the year of kind of media productions. So it goes through and it just shows you all of the big news topics that happened in the year 1995. So I know most people that are watching these videos probably weren't even alive then, but here you go, 1995. Up next, we have The Seventh Guest, released by Trilobite in 1993, and I actually have this game on CDI and on PC. It was fairly popular on PC, and a buddy of mine, John Riggs, he was actually telling me that the one of the reasons that this didn't come out on other consoles was because of Nintendo's exclusive licensing deal with the CDI, because they had the Super Nintendo CD-ROM coming out. A Great Day at the Races was released by CDI Racing in 1993, and it's kind of like a gambling game with no real stakes. I mean, you're going to the track, you're picking different horses, and you're betting on races. I mean, that's pretty much all this game is, and yeah, I mean, I don't really get it. Up next, we have A Visit to Sesame Street Letters, released by Children's Television Workshop in 1991, and... Much like many of the games on this console, it was all around like education and kids' games and stuff like that, and this is no different. It teaches you all the different letters, you get to interact with a bunch of the characters on Sesame Street, and I mean, for what it is, it's actually pretty cool, and it's got some really nice animation to it. And here we have A Visit to Sesame Street Numbers, released by Children's Television Workshop in 1991, and this is the same thing as the letters one, except there's some new characters and stuff like that, and instead of doing letters, you're doing numbers. So it's still a pretty cool game. Uh, my daughter thought it was pretty cool to see Sesame Street characters on the old TV in Daddy's Man Cave, uh, but yeah, I mean, there you go, Sesame Street. Up next is the Berenstain Bears On Their Own and You On Your Own, released by Philips Interactive Media in 1993. And this one is kind of like an interactive cartoon. I mean, the whole premise of the CDI was that it was interactive, hence the I and all the names. But, I mean, yeah, it, it was pretty neat, actually. I remember this cartoon growing up. I remember all the little books and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool to see this on the console. Up next is Burn Cycle, released by Trip Media in 1994, and this one actually had some pretty cool graphics to it. It was very, you know, 90s, edgy, hacker looking, and overall, I mean, it had some pretty decent 3D graphics for the time. It's definitely, you know, no PlayStation or Saturn or anything like that, but as you can see in the footage, I mean, it's still pretty good looking, even though the interactivity part of this whole console wasn't that great. Up next is Cartoon Jukebox, released by AIM Kidscape Group in 1991, and this is basically like a sing-along DVD for kids, and it's just filled with cartoon and 3D-esque animation, stuff like that, and you just sing along with the different kids. It's all a bunch of like nursery rhyme kind of stuff, so, I mean, my kids like it. Up next is Chaos Control, released by Infogrames in 1995, and this game, it... Again, it has that kind of edgy feel to it, but it was actually kind of fun. You're going around and flying through like a little spaceship and stuff like that, and just kind of, you know, playing through a space shooter kind of game. It was pretty neat to see a game like this on here. Up next is Connect 4, released by Capital Disc Interactive in 1991, and... Just like any digital version of this stinking game, I can never beat the computer. I chose the easiest mode, and it was still whooping my butt. I, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe I'm better at like getting in people's heads when it's real people, but 
I am terrible at digital versions of this game. But I mean, it's Connect 4. It's exactly what you would expect. Up next is The Crayon Factory, released by Philips Sidewalk Studio in 1995. And this one, it's kind of like coming up with mix and match colors. And it's like a digital version of those physical, like, melting pot kind of things you could do with Crayola crowns. And, I mean, it, it's pretty cool. You got a bunch of the Crayola characters and stuff uh, in here, or like Crayola-esque characters. And very fun and animated. Up next is Earth Command, released by Visionary Media in 1994. And this was another spacey themed one. And I mean, it was okay. It was pretty cool. Uh, just the concept of it. And the graphics were okay. But this was one where I just couldn't get to really go beyond the menu anytime I would try to record it. It was very rare that it would go beyond the menu. Up next is Flashback, released by Teartex LTD in 1995. And I feel like I talk about this game constantly because I have it on pretty much every 90s console that I own. And cool game, neat animation style. Uh, there are a few different games that have this kind of style to them. But it's still pretty point and clicky feeling. And I'm not really into that kind of game that much. Up next is Flintstones and Jetsons Time Warp, released by RGA Interactive in 1994. And this is like an interactive version of the Jetsons Flintstones crossover cartoon movie thing that came out. And I remember loving that as a kid. I thought it was awesome. And it's kind of cool to see that on the CDI. Up next is Hotel Mario, released by Philips Fantasy Factory in 1994, and this is one that's actually pretty fun on this game. I mean, the controllers on this console are total crap, but this was actually a pretty cool game. It gave me some very, like, original Super Mario Bros. cartoon kind of vibes, where really weird proportions, and it, yeah, the animation is meh, but overall the gameplay was actually pretty fun. Here we have Inca, released by Cocktail Vision in 1993, and couldn't really figure out exactly what this was supposed to be. It is obviously Incan themed, and I guess it's just kind of like a showcase of Incan history, maybe? But I don't know. It, it was very slow. It was hard to get through the menus to actually get to any gameplay. Up next is International Tennis Open, released by Infogrames in 1993, and this one is two-player. The menus are so boring to navigate through. The coloring is just very bland. This game does not capture my attention well at all. It looks like I'm about to watch some cheesy documentary in school or something like that. And the gameplay is not much better. Up next, we have The Joker's Wild, released by Accent Media Productions in 1993. And I guess this was a game show on TV. I don't remember this growing up. It had to have been a game show in the 90s, so it would have been around the time I would have watched shows like this. But yeah, I don't remember this one. But you're basically just playing a CDI version of the game show. Up next, we have Kether, released by Infogrames in 1993. And I don't get it. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. It's a lot of it is in French. And yeah, I just, I don't get it. I, I don't know what I'm looking at. This was all I was presented with and I don't understand. Here is Laser Lords released by Spinnaker Software in 1992. And the intro animation sequence, it, it's kind of cool. Like a little car taken off into space and stuff like that. But then you get this weird dressed up character FMV action going on and it is completely off-putting. Was not interested in playing any longer after that. And here we have Link the Faces of Evil released by Animation Magic in 1993. And this may be the last game for this particular video but next week we will have the continuation of this series and there will be two more Zelda games. Spoiler they're not great, and the animation is not great. Lost Eden was released by Virgin Interactive in 1995, and I gotta say, this game is actually pretty nice looking. It's got some decent 3D animation for the time period. The still animation doesn't look that bad. Gameplay was okay, and I gotta say, 
I was pretty impressed for this being a CDI game. It really felt like a early 90s PC title. Up next, we have Merlin's Apprentice, released by Funhouse in 1995. And honestly, this gives me like, you know, mid 90s, early 90s, like Disney cartoon vibes. And it really doesn't play that well. It's very point and click adventure, which already isn't my kind of game. And it just, I don't know, it didn't look that great. I feel it could have looked better based on some of the other titles on this console. Up next, we have Mother Goose Hidden Pictures, released by American Interactive Media in 1991. And this one is definitely a game that is geared towards children. And what you're doing is kind of, you know, find the hidden objects in the images kind of sort of thing. I mean, it's very point and clicky, but it's pretty fun for little kids. And as an adult, I mean, it was cool to go back and just kind of see, you know, something old like this, but I wouldn't go back to it again. Here we have Mutant Rampage Body Slam, released by Animation Magic in 1994. And this one reminded me of, like, the Black Sheep Second Cousin to Mutant Football League, those kind of games. It's over-the-top, ridiculous mutant mayhem, and it's actually kind of fun. I mean, I don't really care for CDI games all that much, but this one, I, I actually had kind of a lot of fun with it. And here we have Muzzy, Learn French the Fun Way, released by Vector in 1994. And as soon as I got this game in the collection, it immediately gave me nostalgic vibes based on when I was a kid. And I would always see the commercials for Muzzy come up and all the different characters and how to learn French and all this stuff. I don't personally know anyone that ever actually used this, but it's pretty cool to have this in the collection. And here we have Mystic Midway Phantom Express, released by Philips POV in 1993. And this is kind of like an on-rails roller coaster kind of game. It's very much carnival-themed and oriented. And, I mean, they actually made, I think it was two or three of these Mystic Midway games. So they must have been, you know, at least somewhat popular. But overall, I mean, it it's okay. Up next is NFL Football Trivia Challenge, released by Capital Disc Interactive in 1993, and it is exactly what the title says. There was no playing games with the title on this. It's literally NFL Football Trivia. That's all it is. And based on when this console came out, I mean, no kid today is going to probably know anything about this. Maybe, you know, dads and grandparents will, but that's about it. And here we have NFL Hall of Fame Football, released by Philips Interactive Media in 1994. And this is essentially a digital archive of all of the NFL Hall of Fame stuff leading up to this point. So it's pretty cool. You get this whole like kind of 3D imagery and gives you some fun menus to play around in and things like that. And then basically it's just a bunch of information loaded on a disc for you to interact with. Up next is Pack Panic, released by Namco in 1995, and this one is actually pretty fun. It's not Pac-Man by any means, but it does use the Pac-Man license, and with that, they essentially created a Tetris game, or like a Dr. Mario kind of game, and you go through, you're stacking the blocks, you're crushing ghosts, things like that, and I gotta say, it was actually pretty fun. Up next is Pinball, released by Capital Disc Interactive in 1991, and it's exactly what you expect. I mean, it, it's Pinball, just on the CDI. I will say one thing I really didn't like about this, I've seen two-screen uh, gameplay before in pinball games, like, for example, Alien Crush, but I don't like the way that they did it in this one. It's a scrolling screen that you're moving through instead of like, oh, you went into the upper area, let's switch to that. It just, it moves weird. Up next, we have Secret Mission, released by Microids in 1996, and this one is, it's interesting. It feels like it's just supposed to be like, you know, NES era kind of military combat games, but then they added some 3D stuff to it. The story is super weak. Gameplay is, eh, as you can see, the animation is not very good, and yeah, I mean, it's okay. Up next is Space Ace, released by Super Club in 1993. And if you've ever played any of these style games, it's basically an interactive cartoon with button prompts and things that you have to do, but they don't tell you what the prompt is. You just kind of got to figure it out as you go. So you're playing through a live cartoon and 
you don't know if you miss something until it's too late. And like right here, boom, I get blasted because I didn't realize I was supposed to move over. And here we have Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, released by Paramount in 1993. And this is a movie. And I will not be showing any of the movie because I don't want to get copyright flagged. But yeah, here it is right here. This is exactly why I can't show it. License for non-commercial private exhibition. Not for you guys. Sorry. And here we have Sticky Bear Math, released by Philips Interactive Media in 1994. And I actually briefly remember playing this as a kid. And it wasn't that fun. I remember Math Blaster, things like that being a lot better. But pretty cool. You know, another educational game. Kind of what this console was known for. Edutainment. Up next, we have Tetsuo Gaiden, released by Philips POV in 1997. And I gotta say, I actually really enjoyed this game. So this one is a top-down scrolling shooter, or a shoot 'em up and it's actually a lot of fun. Graphically, it looks great, especially for the time period, and it plays really well. And honestly, I just, I had a lot of fun with this game. Up next is The Palm Springs Open, released by Fathom Pictures in 1991, and if you have ever played a golf game, maybe you think they're fun. I don't, unless it's something like Mario Golf or Golf Story, something like that. This game is boring. It is so boring. It's not fun to play. The FMV is crap, and the game is oh, it's just not good. Up next is another movie, The Secret of Nim, released by MGM and UA in 1994. And again, can't show you any of the stuff except for, you know, this little intro part right here, because I'm going to get copyright flagged if I do. But, yep, another movie. Here we have Video Speedway, released by ISG Productions in 1992. And this one, it's, it's okay. I would put this on the level of like, you know, a 32X virtual racing kind of thing in the terms of its graphics and playability. Overall, it's still not that great, but it, I mean, it was okay. Here we have X-Men Night of the Sentinels, released by Polygram Video in 1992. And you guessed it, it is another movie, so I can't play it. But here it is in my collection by Polygram Video. Yeah. And here we have Zelda's Adventure, released by Veritas Corporation in 1994. It is equally not as good, just like the other two Zelda games on this console. And this is probably the worst Photoshop work I have ever seen in my life in this whole intro right here. But, I mean, it's cool because it's another Zelda game not on a Nintendo console. It's not good. It's not great. But it's pretty cool that it's there. And last up is Zelda The Wand of Gamelon, released by Animation Magic in 1993. And this one, I think, is the most fun out of the three. It's still not great. It's very frustrating, and the animation is garbage. It looks like it was done in MS Paint. But, again, cool that there's a Zelda game not on a Nintendo console. And there you have it, everyone. I know, I know, your minds are absolutely blown at the quality of what this library has. No, I'm kidding. It's mostly trash. However, I would be very curious to know down in the comments below, do you have a favorite Philips CDI game? And while you're telling me all about that, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons as well as that little notification bell so that you can alert every time I got a new video coming out. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you all for watching and I'll catch you later.